This is the Brain Chip Podcast. Hear from our thought leaders about neuromorphic computing, beneficial AI, and how Brain Chip's Akita is pushing AI to the edge. This podcast is a place for investors, practitioners, and anyone interested in the future of AI. Hi, all. I'm Rob Telson, Vice President of Worldwide Sales at BrainChip. Welcome and thank you for joining our latest episode of our BrainChip podcast series. These events are structured to provide current and future investors and those really interested in AI and the BrainChip technology a path to better understand who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. If you have not listened to any of our podcasts, please go to our website at www.brainship.com and visit our Learn tab and select Podcasts. You can also listen to any of these podcasts on your favorite podcast platform, or please go to our YouTube channel at Brainship Inc. and find all of our podcasts and additional media. Today, we have the pleasure of spending some time with Doug Fairbairn. Doug is the Director of Business Development at Megachips. It was Doug's vision and foresight that enabled our two companies to come together and establish a partnership. And throughout Doug's career, he has played a pivotal role in driving new technologies. Also, Doug is a very talented photographer, something I'm a big fan of his work and what he's done. So Doug, welcome to our podcast. Well, thanks, Rob. Uh, It's great to be here and uh, delighted to have the opportunity to talk about the relationship that we've developed uh, over the past few months. Yes, and we're we're looking forward to that part of this discussion, you know, and and yeah, it's it's good to have you with us today. Uh, This is going to be a fun podcast for our listeners. There are so many different ways that our conversation can take us, but what I do know is that we are developing, as you mentioned, a solid partnership between BrainChip and Megachips. And our listeners will truly appreciate this discussion and understanding the impact uh, that we're, we're, we're going to make on the industry as we work closer together. Uh, so, Doug, why don't you take a moment and provide our listeners with a bit of background on yourself? Sure. I have spent most of my career uh, involved in semiconductors or electronic design automation, EDA. And uh, so this is sort of the latest instantiation of that. Uh, my background goes all the way back to uh, being one of the founders of uh, VLSI Technology, which is one of the original ASIC companies. Uh, I later uh, founded an EDA startup called uh, Redwood Design Automation, which was acquired by Cadence, and I spent several years with Cadence as well. Uh, I've remained in the field and remained engaged in uh, what's happening, and a couple of years ago, I uh, reconnected with some people at Megachips, who we had uh, done business with uh, in the in the distant past, and uh, took on the job of helping them enter uh, into the United States market from their base in Japan, and also to establish a strong foothold in the uh, edge AI marketplace. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. And uh, let's talk about Megachips a little bit more in detail, and and, and just. Just taking a step back from that, though, I want to emphasize what, what Doug talked about with VLSI technology and what he also did in the EDA space. I mean, this is this is an individual that's uh, has been pivotal pivotal in regards to uh, how the semiconductor world and some of the EDA technologies have actually evolved. And so, uh, it's been fun working with you, Doug. But let's take it. Let's take a. a um, a step into mega chips a little bit. And uh, for our listeners, why don't you give us some background on the company and, and what they're focused on? Sure. Well, it's fun to talk about. It's uh, actually the, I call it the billion dollar company that most people have never heard of. It was founded uh, 30 years ago in Japan as an unusual entrepreneurial startup for that, uh, for that particular country. Uh, Masahiro Shindo was the founder and he has bootstrapped the company into uh, around uh, 800 plus million dollars. Uh, they are focused almost exclusively on ASIC design. They have completed over 1,500 ASIC designs uh, throughout their history. And they're, as a result, they're very well established and trusted in Japan. Uh, we're now aggressively pursuing the U.S. market, and uh, that's what we're really here to talk about today, especially in conjunction with our focus on, on AI. 
Our customers are typically systems companies who need to develop some sort of system on chip SOC uh, to optimize cost, size, power, uh, and to make their products uh, the most attractive in the marketplace. Uh, we also uh, work with companies like BrainChip who need to take their IP into silicon. So uh, with BrainChip, we have uh, both a customer relationship and a partnership relationship. And I think it makes it a particularly strong, uh, strong situation. Uh, in terms of uh, how we serve our customers, we are happy to intersect the customer wherever they are in their design phase. Uh, if all they have is a chip specification and to, can describe what kind of capability they want to uh, bring to the market and their cost power uh, size envelope, we can then take it from there and take that chip all the way into volume production. Or if they're more skilled and uh, take it to the RTL or even down to the uh, mass level, uh, we can enter at that point and uh, handle the design qualification and production responsibilities. So we're really a full service ASIC supplier. Yeah, that's what we what what excited us about the partnership is the fact that your, your depth and the breadth of your, your capabilities was something that, that from a brain chip perspective, we felt very comfortable with the fact of, of how you can address um, the SOC design environment and um, supporting a lot of our, our current and future customers. So, so what differentiates Megachips from its competitors? Well, I think there are a number of points. Uh, while we're focused on AI, I think that's a significant differentiation. We've spent the last 18 months really uh, getting up to speed and making sure that we have significant value to add in the edge AI space. Uh, we've dedicated a set of our own engineers to uh, help service this space and provide uh, help to our customers in terms of understanding how best to apply uh, this technology and their particular uh, design challenge. Um, we are, have the ability, as I pointed out, to enter the project at any point in the design phase. Some of our competitors really just handle sort of the back end operations, whereas we can enter uh, very early in the design phase and uh, take it all the way through production. Uh, and also some of our competitors are limited in terms of the foundry options that they offer, uh, maybe only a single foundry option. In our case, uh, we actually work with four foundries and are uh, actively pursuing others uh, as the uh, opportunities uh, develop. The um, the other area is that uh, we are a very high volume producer. We ship 150 to 200 million units per year. Uh, so we're very used to dealing with very high volume uh, competitively priced uh, chips. And uh, that's also an area that uh, I think differentiates us. And uh, lastly, the uh, fact that we are solely based in Japan, our design centers are in Japan and the United States. Uh, we are in a strong position to protect our customers intellectual property and make sure that it doesn't fall into hands that uh, they wouldn't want it to. So that's one of the areas that uh, the company has really built a strong reputation on in Japan is being able to work uh, very closely with the customers, uh, but also to protect their intellectual property and be a trusted vendor in this uh, very important space. Yeah, and, and, and just to highlight that, I mean, Doug used uh, a, a phrase here at the end called trusted vendor. And one of the things that as we continue to educate our listeners in regards to the ecosystem, uh, this whole process is really about trust and uh, having the established um, business and the processes in place that Megachips has is something that really does differentiate them as they continue to evolve their business moving forward. Uh, how do you see AI evolving um, throughout the ASIC design environment? Well, that's a good question. The, uh, we entered this market because our founder, uh, Masahiro Shindo, Shindo-san, uh, felt very strongly as we do that uh, AI is going to become ubiquitous in the future. Uh, it is gonna find its way into virtually every design that we do uh, as time goes on. Uh, I see this as similar to the introduction of the microprocessor some time ago. 
uh, where at first it was sort of, a, there was a lot of confusion, some education required, uh, but in the end, virtually every product has ended up incorporating a microprocessor. AI processors are in fact, just a, a new, new architecture uh, coming onto the scene, uh, quite a different approach, very radically different architecture, uh, still needs a lot of education in terms of how best to apply them. Uh, there is need for more than one solution. Uh, there isn't a single thing that fits all, uh, all applications. Uh, but one of the things that we feel strongly about the uh, BrainShip solution is the fact that it uh, actually fits into a, a wide variety of applications. And, uh, and we realized that there was a lot of confusion and uncertainty in the, in the potential market base and a market uh, customer base. And we needed to take a proactive role in helping the customer identify and develop the best solution. And so we've really aggressively worked with uh, BrainShip to uh, make sure that we fully understood the capabilities of their product and could best present it to the customer. Yeah, thank you, Doug. And, and just, to, just to build off of that a little bit, uh, what excites Megachips about BrainChip and the BrainChip technology? Yeah, so I think the first thing, uh, people immediately recognize the value of uh, being a low power solution uh, and relatively small and, low and therefore low cost. Uh, when it comes to chip design, especially uh, uh, applications at the edge, we're always worried about cost. We're always worried about power. So those are two areas where uh, where virtually every customer has a concern and the brain chip solution uh, has immediate attraction. Uh, what we found is they very quickly zero in on another strong characteristic that is the on-chip learning capability. And uh, the, I've actually been uh, pleased and perhaps even a little bit surprised at, at what the wide acceptance and wide realization of the value of that uh, capability is uh, in the marketplace. There are, there's a number of areas where that's particularly important. And, uh, and lastly, you know, from a non-technical point of view, uh, the, one of our attractions to BrainShip was that it has real traction in the marketplace. Uh, you guys have done a, a great job of, of building a relationship with the, with the potential customers out there. And uh, that validation was uh, very attractive to us in, in uh, teaming up with, with BrainChip. Yeah, thanks, Doug. And you know, it's funny, I, I actually was in a, in a discussion yesterday with a, a firm that's done a, a ton of analysis on, on the industry and the technology and, and um, their level of excitement with what we're doing when it comes to, to edge-based learning and on-chip learning was, they were blown away. And uh, it's great to hear, uh, uh, from partners such as yourself and, and industry experts that uh, BrainChip continues to evolve in this area and, and, and basically um, lead the way uh, uh, in comparison to others uh, with this technology and what we're doing. Um, what key areas do you believe will incorporate AI into their product offerings in the short term? So, Megachips already has a uh, significant position in consumer related products. So there are applications in uh, cameras and gaming and appliances, uh, which uh, I think are going to yield some near term uh, applications and, uh, and production opportunities for both of us. Uh, we also see that there are uh, applications uh, people were talking to in the industrial applications uh, for anomaly detection, preventative maintenance. Uh, that also has some near-term opportunities. Uh, longer term, we're excited about uh, some very large markets in uh, the automotive space, for example, but I think that's going to be a longer, uh, a longer term view. So shorter term, you know, we're looking at products that turn rapidly uh, and uh, I would highlight these various consumer applications. Those are also areas where the ability to kind of customize the product using on-chip learning when in the hands of the actual user is particularly uh, interesting. So that uh, there's a good match in terms of, of our current customer base and what BrainChip has to offer. That's great. And, and uh, 
Uh, yeah, there's, these are two, there's two key areas you mentioned in the consumer and the automotive space are, as you know, key areas where we're focused and, and we do believe there's going to be a wide acceptance of our technology as we continue to evolve AI and, and look outwards. But uh, you kind of highlighted on it, but I'm just going to just bring it up again. Looking, when you look further out, if you look five years out from now, um, where do you believe AI will have the most impact? Well, I, I mean, I think it's going to impact everything, but the area that particularly, you know, uh, uh, interests us is the area that I just discussed, and that is that uh, consumer applications are going to be incorporating AI uh, on a very widespread basis, and uh, everything, uh, everything you touch is going to be personalized through the use of AI, and I think the consumer will see that benefit of customization to them personally as a result of the AI capability as being a very uh, impactful thing in terms of day-to-day -day lives. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, as I say, it's also going to be used in such a wide variety of things, it's hard to say which is uh, uh, the impact, uh, the greatest impact. But I think where people will see it most is on those things which they use day-to-day, minute-to-minute. Uh, everything is going to be customized to you individually and will be able to respond to you in the most efficient way. Yeah, that, that, that I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, we always end our podcast with my favorite question. And uh, uh, okay, so who, who is your favorite superhero and why? <laughs> you really have an off the wall question here, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> my favorite superhero. Well, you know, I guess I'm old school. Uh, and so I have to go back to Superman and uh, that's uh, and, and I think uh, both from my youth, the uh, you know, that was my first superhero. And, you know, there's something about Superman where he's sort of this invisible persona. Uh, he just is a, a regular day to day guy. And uh, but when faced with a challenge, uh, he rises to the challenge and, and saves the day. And so, uh, but when he's done and he's saved the world, then he just goes back to being his, uh, his uh, inconspicuous persona. So uh, I'm going to go with Superman as my, uh, as my favorite superhero. I love it. I love it. It's a good one. And, and uh, actually, I, I, I will say I, I was on a podcast where uh, the question was asked of me and, and I went with Superman as well. I, I did it because of the fact that I, I need to run at a faster pace and, and, and being able to fly everywhere and, and all the other uh, uh, you know, powers that he, that he has. Uh, but I like the way you approached it. I do, that, that was great. So, so Doug, uh, you know, on behalf of everyone, thank you. Thank you for your insight and feedback today. It's, it's truly appreciated. Um, on behalf of the BrainShip team, we want to thank all of our listeners, our investors, our analysts, our employees, and everyone interested in learning more about AI and BrainShip. We truly appreciate all of your passion and support. Uh, our podcast series will continue. So until our next podcast, we wish everyone to stay healthy, happy, and most importantly, stay out of trouble. Thanks for listening to the BrainChip Podcast. Please remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.